Hey, what's up folks? And welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a NeoPixel ring project that we're working on. Let's take a look at the, uh, the project in the overhead here. This is a 3D printed grid diffuser for the 24 NeoPixel ring from Adafruit. And this is really fun. The black LED acrylic is such a nice diffuser for LEDs. This pops out. I actually CNC milled this, uh, but I 3D printed this grid here, which is basically this thing here. Um, the grid here has uh, 24 of these walls that create separation and is printed in black PLA so that it can so I can separate and segment these uh, these pixels, which are otherwise eye blinding. And then with the neo uh, with the black LED acrylic uh, kind of press fitted over this grid, you get this super nice evenly diffused uh, effect here with the LEDs. Super, super awesome. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to model this grid in, in Fusion 360. So let's take a look at where you can get the, the NeoPixel ring and the black LED acrylic. Of course, it's from Adafruit, so you can pick up your NeoPixel ring in different sizes. We have 24, 16, 12, and even a 60 uh, NeoPixel ring size. So you can get all these different ones here. Uh, the black LED acrylic, Adafruit just started stocking. I actually picked up a sheet. Uh, it's a 12 by 12 inch sheet, so you can get lots of different pieces out of it. And uh, you can use uh, a laser cutter, you can CNC mill it, or you can just use a scoring tool and cut pieces out as well. Very, very cool. Uh, the code in the NeoPixel animations are running CircuitPython. And uh, this is a great guide here on how to get code on your Adafruit Feather M4, which I'm using over here. And uh, I just copied and pasted this stuff and changed the pixel count from 32 to 24. And this worked out really well. So if you're just getting started with code, definitely consider CircuitPython. Um, if you're running CircuitPython, you, when you plug in your device uh, over USB, it shows up like a USB drive. All of the code in the libraries are actually accessible. So you don't even need an IDE. You can just edit the code in the text file or just download this and put it in the board and it runs like automatically. It's really awesome, so check it out. Um, the NeoPixel ring, we made three models of all the different sizes, and we have a GitHub repo where you can get all the CAD parts. So definitely check that out. I have it linked in the description. And uh, if you want to request a part or have an issue with a part, you can use the issues tab there and submit them over here. So there you go. Let's jump into Fusion and start making this thing. So I already saved out a blank document here, and uh, I'm just gonna import this into my blank document because I have to save it out before I can import it and uh, we'll, we'll pick the 24 NeoPixel version. So I'll bring that into my, into my document here um, from the, from the uh, data window here, the data panel. I have the grid turned on because I like to see uh, where is this in, in, in space and uh, the grid helps me do that. Uh, I have it in the exact center of our origin, which is really gonna be helpful when we're doing mirrors and circular patterns. So I, I make it a point there that uh, having everything in the center origin is really, really helpful. So now that it's in there, I'll hit okay, and then that uh, places it down in there. I'll go ahead and make a new component. We can name it uh, whatever we want. We'll call it ring holder, why not? Or ring grid, something like that. And uh, I'll hit okay. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna open our user parameters window. Um, and then I'll assign some user parameters. So I want an inner circle diameter. So I'll just call it inner, and then uh, I'll make it, uh, I think it was 50. And then I'll make another one and call it the outer. And then this one will be, uh, I think it was uh, 68 and hit okay. And then I'll do another one and this will be the wall thickness. So I'll just go ahead and type in wall thickness and I'll make that 1.5 millimeters and hit okay. Okay, 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 okay. So the next thing is to do is to um, create a sketch with our uh, grid ring component activated. And I'll use the bottom floor plane. And then from the center, I'll uh, use the uh, circle tool. Uh, the hotkey is C, C for circle. And I'll start from the center, work my way out, and then this will be the outer uh, dimension. And then I'll do another circle, again, using the C uh, keyboard shortcut. And then uh, this will be the inner circle. All right, and then that is there. The next thing to do is to figure out how I'm gonna create these walls that will kind of go across these. I know I can use a circular pattern because that uh, works really well, but I need to figure out a good diameter uh, uh, for our, um, not a good diameter, but a good dimension, uh, dim uh, degrees of distance from uh, our lines. So the way I found to do it is to create a construction line. I'll start from the center and I'll work my way to all the way across and if I start to roll over uh, this line here, the little X icon lets me know that I'm gonna get a coincident constraint. 
And then if I go right over that red line, I get this other constraint that's called a horizontal or vertical constraint. So if I click on that, it makes it vertically constrained. And you get this little icon here. If you select that icon, of course you can delete it, and now it's free to move around. And if I move it close to this uh, vertical line here, if I click on the vertical or horizontal constraint, it goes vertical. So just kind of to throw that in there, um, if you're new to constraints, they're, they're the backbone of like all the things. <laughs> so I'll bring it back in there, and then to make it a construction line, I'll select it and hit the X key on my keyboard, or this little icon here that makes it a construction line. That way it's not uh, intersecting our, our paths and we're like our, our profiles and we're extruding stuff. Okay, so now I need another line. And this is also gonna start from the center, uh, but it's gonna kind of go, try to get it in between the two LEDs here, these two LEDs. So eh, somewhere like right here, Man, that's a little off. So let's do a dimension. So I'll select that, hit D on my keyboard, and you'll see that the dimension is for lengths. But if I click on the dotted line, it turns into a degree. So now it says it's 8.9 to, I'm gonna round that off to just eight. And you'll see here that if we zoom in, it, we're a little bit off, maybe go seven. And we're still a little bit off. So let's go in the middle of seven and eight, 7.5. And that's looking a little bit better. You can see that there's like a little fiducial here. And that looks like it's in the right center of there. So to get a good idea of, of how we can do this, why don't we pattern this line and see what happens. Circular pattern, there's two to choose from. I wanna select the second one because that one's just for the sketches, so I'll click that. My object select, I need to click my center point, which is this center here, or it could be this, lot, this, uh, this circle here. Uh, and then it uh, gives me a three quantity, quantity of three, let's change it to 24. I get a little visual, there's a lot of lines now, and uh, I'll hit okay. And then if you look uh, at another end here, you'll see that that's pretty close. I think that 7.5 is definitely right on the money here to get an even amount uh, of, uh, of spacing between all of these pixels. I think that works pretty well. So then from here is we can hit finish sketch. And although we can't extrude these out using the solid extrude, it won't work, it just doesn't. We can use the surface tab and then use the extrude from the surface tab to extrude these lines out. Now we could select all of these one by one, or we could try a marquee select, but uh, it's really useful to get a hold of the selection filters. That way we can just say, I'm gonna deselect all the things by, by clicking on select all, and then I'll just select sketch curves, which also includes uh, sketch lines. Uh, so now I can just come in here and make a marquee selection, clicking on this empty area, starting from the right, and then dragging down to the bottom left. That'll select all the lines, and um, let's see if, uh, if we can extrude these out now. So I'll start to drag them upwards. You can see here it's, it's, it's working. That looks good. I'll hit OK. And then if I open up our, com our components, you can see that we got two surface bodies because Fusion has kind of um, tried to make this into a single surface body, but didn't quite do it. We still have two of them here. And ideally what we want is like, 24 of them, because if we try to extrude this out, Fusion might not like it. So uh, what I meant is like, if we try to thicken this out, because they're not bodies, they are surfaces, we need to make them bodies, and you can do that by thickening them out. So I'll use the thicken command, this one here, and then I'll select this body, and then I'll do a, I'll try to select the second body, that seemed to work okay, but if that didn't work, you could always select the bodies first, hold down shift if you have a whole assortment of them, that we can select them all quickly. And then we can do the thicken command. And, uh, and then we'll apply a thickness here, the wall thickness. Um, and it's saying that the faces in the shell have inconsistent orientations. And that's a problem. So what happened is uh, when we tried to extrude all of them using our selection filter, it, it did something odd. So let's go ahead and delete that extrusion from our thing. And let's try to be smart about this. Let's just extrude one of them and then pattern that. So let's try that out. So let me extrude this out. Let's say 10, right? I use the surface extrude and now I can thicken this out. Thicken right here. Select that, um, that, that surface. And then um, we, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say thickness, wall thickness. 
And then we can choose whether we want a one-sided direction or a symmetrical sided. As you, if you zoom in, the one-sided is only going to be one way, and that's kind of offsetting our wall here, and it's crashing into our NeoPixel. So let's change that to symmetric. And then the wall thickness now is basically being doubled value. So I need to divide that by two. So just divide by two. And then that makes it one and a half millimeters. And then I'll hit OK. Fusion does it. And now I have a body. So now that body, I can actually circular pattern that body. It's set to bodies here. And then I'll say axis. And then uh, I'll select this blue line, which is going to be a little bit difficult to select. But that's our Z axis. And that's what we want to select. 3 is by default. I'll hit 24 for the quantity. Hit OK. Now we're going to have all of these bodies, which is fine. The last thing to do is we need to kind of merge them all together. So we'll use the combine feature, combine those all together. So combine. I'll select one of these bodies, hold down shift, and then select the last body in the list. That way I can select all of them. And then the operation will be set to join. And I'll hit OK. And that joins it all together. So that seems to work fine. Um, but that's not exactly the shape that we want yet. Um, I don't want to have to extrude all of these out and like cut them. And it's just more and more stuff in the timeline. So I'm going to just like delete everything and like start oh, a little bit over again, just to kind of show you like, let's, you know, we can optimize this a lot better. So let's start with the sketch. So now that we know the sketch, I'm going to jump into it. I'm editing it now. I'm going to kind of pull out these dimensions. Just give me some clarity. And what we'll do is now we don't need all of these lines. We just don't need them all. We only need one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to selection filter, select, select, deselect all, and then just select sketch curves again, because I'm going to select them all. And I'll deselect these two lines, our construction line and our first line. And I'll just delete the rest of them, because we really don't need them. And then you know, Fusion gives me an error or a warning saying, hey, that, was, that used to be a pattern, and you've deleted it. So the pattern's gone, of course. I'll hit Finish Sketch. And actually, we're not done with the sketch. Let's go back into the sketch. I'm trying to rush this. What we want to do is we, want to, we don't actually need this line. We just need this line that's going from this circle to the outer circle. So we can use our Trim tool under the Modify window or the, the hotkey T for Trim. And then we could just roll over here. You see it turns red. That is right. And Fusion's smart enough to know that that's probably where you want your trim to be, where this line intersects uh, the circle. So I'll just trim that. I'll get another warning saying that uh, some of the constraints may have changed. But if you try to move that line, it won't move because it's pretty much constrained. So that's what I got. I'll hit Finish Sketch. Now we're done with the sketches. It is now a lot simpler and a lot lighter to work with because we don't have all these lines. And so what we can do here is extrude these circles first. Using the surface extrude again, we'll extrude out these two circles. Um, the height, I think, was just 10. So I extruded those out. Now I need to thicken them out. So let me thicken those out. Um, I'll select this face and then this face. Fusion kind of got confused. So let me try that again. I'll select this face and then that face. That looks a little bit better. For our dimension, we'll say wall thickness. And because it's a direction symmetric, I need to say wall thickness divided by 2. And that will make it 1.5 millimeters. The operation set to new body. I'll hit OK. And now inside of our, uh, inside of our bodies um, list, we have two of them. Great. So now what we can do is we'll extrude this one line using our surface extrude. So I'll extrude that one line. And instead of typing 10, I can pull this out and say, I want the extent. I'll change that distance to two object. And then I can select either one of these top surfaces here on the, uh, on the rings. I'll select that one. That way, if I ever change that height, um, it'll, the, the, the grid, the wall thickness of the grid will change along with it. Uh, so the operation is a new body. I'll hit OK. It creates our surface body, which we need to thicken. So now I'll thicken that out with it selected. Uh, the thickness here is a, is a it's a hard-coded value, so let's change that to our user parameter thickness. And of course, we need to divide that by 2. And then uh, the, the direction is symmetric. And the operation is, let's change that new body to join. Let's just have it join, because that's what we want anyway. We want this to be a unified body, a single body. So I'll hit OK. And now that merges it in really nice. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the next thing we need to do is just now we can do the pattern. So in. Uh, I'll pull that out with my, my design shortcuts. Type in a circular pattern. This is the one we want to select. 
and then uh, I'll change the pattern type to features. And then in the timeline, I'll select that extrude that created the wall thickness and then the actual thickness command. So it's just those two. And now I'll select the axis, which is our blue line here in the center. I'll click that. And then you'll see I got a quantity of three. Let's change it to 24. We get a nice little preview. I'll hit OK. And Fusion's going to calculate all that and try to do it as best as it can. So it did it. Um, it did have to kind of create kind of these copies of our solids, but it hid them for us. And, and all we're left with now is a single body, which is what we want. From here, um, we can start adding all the little things like tabs and nubs to make it snap fit the NeoPixel ring. But if you look at it now, let me turn off the sketch. If you look at it and do a section analysis, you'll see that we're kind of crashing into the pixels. Um, I'll give you an idea by doing a, a section analysis. Going in here, you can see here that it's just cutting right into it. So what we need to do is we can go into that extrude right here, the first one we did, or the second one that we did that is creating our wall. And then what we'll do is where it says start, we can put offset plane and let's put like 2.5. And you'll see here that now that has cleared that space there and it gives us a little bit of extra room there. I think it even makes it so that we have um, some clearance here for our, our capacitor here. Um, we might wanna change that a little bit more. Let's make that 2.5 or 2.8. We could even create that we can even drive that with a user parameter if we wanted to. Now if I look in there, I'll click on, I have a selection filter problems. Let me select all. There you go. I'll select, uh, come on, I'll select this edge and then the top of this capacitor. You see I have 0.4 millimeter distance. That works out pretty well. I think that's going to work fine. And uh, from here we can start adding more stuff to it. But uh, that is how I was able to create this grid. Um, that's really all the things I wanted to cover. I really wanted to show how kind of the wrong approach can really lead to unexpected results. It's a little bit frustrating to work with that, but if you just try to reduce uh, the features um, and try to just kind of think a little bit differently about your patterns and what you want to extrude, I think uh, you can optimize it so that it actually works and doesn't crash Fusion. Because I was able to crash Fusion doing this the first time, especially with that one way. And if you do want to create that, try to just extrude one and then circular pattern it. That's really the key here, I think. Um, yeah, there's there's that. Um, if you folks wanted, uh, if you'd like me to do a tutorial on how I did the CNC milling setup, uh, that's something that I could put together as well. But uh, for real, I just wanted to do the 3D printing and, and, and talking about circular patterns. So that's how I created this project here. It's a really, really fun one. The black LED acrylic is so fun to play with. And of course, the NeoPixel rings create some really awesome LED lighting effects. Don't forget, you can pick up the, uh, the NeoPixel rings from Adafruit. Of course, here I got a link for you in the description. The black LED acrylic is super cool to work with. And I encourage you to check out CircuitPython for all of your awesome LED animations. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are staying safe. Uh, and don't forget, um, it's up to you to make a great day. I'll see you guys later. Bye.